Hello and welcome to the second session of the form method. We're going to talk about myofascial meridians and this is the work of Thomas Myers who's a, a pronounced anatomist in the field of fascia and um, he has uh, described these myofascial meridians as kind of like tracks or highways in the body made up of connective tissue. So the two that we're specifically going to focus on in this session are the back and front lines or deep front line and superficial back line as well as the spiral lines. So the superficial back line on the left as you can see hopefully here if you might have to zoom in a little bit is that this myofascial meridian starts underneath the feet so from the toes it wraps underneath the arch of the foot around the heel then up past the calf the hamstrings into the the sacrum and all up the spine so right on the outer edges of the spine and then it actually comes up and over the skull and touches the brow line so when you're talking about tight hamstrings what you're actually talking about is kind of creating length and fluidity in this whole back line so from the the soles of the feet right to the brow then the deep front line the image on the right uh, very similar in that it begins at the toes, specifically the area of the big toe, and traveling up through the inner track of the leg, uh, obviously into the quadriceps and then into the hips. And then it kind of redirects and comes right up the front of the spine. So through the solar plexus up into the throat area, and I feel it actually ending at the tip of the tongue. So here you have the front and the back lines, and this makes up the vertical quality of the body. Good, and now turning to the spiral lines. So essentially, these are the lines of the body that kind of connect us from opposite hip to shoulder or opposite foot to shoulder. And um, what's happening here is you can see from the feet, it's coming up into the area in and around the abdomen. Uh, even through the lateral sides of the legs and then it's crossing, it's kind of wrapping, this nice wrapping sling kind of moves from the hips and wraps around the low ribs and actually connects us through the back body. So just a nice image for us to see, especially if we're performing a lot of asymmetrical movement, one-sided swings or throws or uh, you know something with a dominant hand uh, the indiscrepancies in the body can kind of be addressed by creating evenness now in the spiral line and then here you can see all of the functional lines of the body that Thomas Myers has described um, so just a nice image to kind of think about how we're connected and trying to embody this proprioceptive idea of the one muscle of the body. No longer are we moving from an anatomical sense of separation. We're really working on synthesis, less on analysis. So see how all these lines arrive. All right, so we'll begin with the belly breath again. And just feeling the four corners of the feet on the mat, allowing the back body to just find a full space, the sacrum wide, the hips relaxed, the knees again falling, falling in on one another as the feet are just a little wider than hips with distance apart. And noticing the shoulders, noticing the back of the skull, right? Everything just relaxing down, find a few natural breaths. And at your own time, on your inhale, you're going to begin to isolate the breath into the front part of the belly again. Inhale, inhale, and exhale again, just letting the, the body relax. So front belly, again, just working at about... 30 to 60 percent effort, right? It's never about forcing the breath. Good. Front chest stays quiet. Exhale, exhale, and focusing on the back belly now, breathing into the low spine, the area of the back belly, allowing the space around the kidneys to become wider, allowing the low spine to have space. Good. Uh, 
side belly, right? Inflating both the left and the right side. Inhale, inhale, inhale. Exhale. Good. And then taking that balloon quality, the breath inflating the front, the back, the sides, allowing even the breath to move up the back. Inhale, inhale, widening the back, feeling this full belly breath. Good. Exhale. Beginning with the tensegrity exercises, let's find the first position with the block underneath the pelvis, allowing the legs to float up. Just keeping the connection at the big toes and the knees drawing in towards one another, the dowel in the hands like prayer, and just allowing the weight of the body just to kind of V the arms and the legs apart and keeping the elbows and the knees drawing in. So just going as far as you can maintain that connection from the vertical line from the toes to the top of the head and just proprioceptively again seeing that evenness deep front line balanced with deep back line good let's switch so removing the block from underneath the pelvis you're going to lift the legs and place the small dowel underneath the knees knees together wrap the legs around the dowel larger dowel in the centers of the hands again let the energy sink at your own time sliding the legs over to the right arms counterweight you to the left and then coming to the other side so just a few here thinking of that preparatory counter movement as the legs draw in a little bit at the end it kind of elasticizes and propels you to the other side sliding vertical line past horizontal line belly breath switch here so removing the dowel from underneath the legs and then letting the legs float up towards the ceiling again relax into the back beam the heels a little bit so flex the feet some and then starting to just move in the same way with a little straighter legs pay attention to the points of the knees together as soon as the knees come apart you've gone too far so again visualizing the proprioceptive awareness from toes to head fingertip to fingertip, inhale, inhale, exhale, just sliding from side to side. Eyes can even follow the feet here a little bit. 60% effort. And then we'll switch. So at your own time, interlacing the hands behind the back of the head, lift the skull, draw the elbows in, let the head relax into the hands. Lean into the left foot to extend the right leg about 80% straight. And notice the quality of the leg. There's a hollowness, a bamboo quality to the leg. And then switch, leaning into the right foot, extend the left leg. Feel the deep front line coming right from the tips of the toes all the way up to the deep, deep belly right up to the tip of the tongue. Switch, other side again. Inhale, 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 exhale, exhale. Switch. Inhale, inhale, all the muscles of the leg even. Finding the legs here, release the head. So you're going to tuck the fingertips underneath the low ribs and try and come out of that large muscle of the abdomen. Leaning into the left foot, just extend the right leg and lift the right leg towards the ceiling. And then lowering, moving at a pace that encourages fluidity, making less momentum, more connection. Massaging through the hip on the right side. Weight of the back body helping, heaviness of the left foot, belly breath. 
watch your own time switch. Just make sure to pause a little bit before continuing to the other side. Notice any differences in the sides here. Again, leg lines. Inhale, inhale. Feeding you all the way to the deep belly, right up to the crown. Exhale, exhale. Pause. So rolling to the right side, supporting the head with the right hand, left foot behind the right, and then lifting the right leg and extending the left arm. So here's the spiral line again, really connecting from opposite foot to hand and shoulder. Let that big toe line of the right foot really encouraging us that deep core connection, right? The core of the body from toes to tips to top of the head. Switch, so catch the right foot, extend the left leg, and then working through the outer line on the left leg, moving through the range of motion of the hip. So there's a little external rotation at the top of the movement here. Let the right side stay heavy. Inhale, inhale, exhale. Doesn't matter how far you go here. Let's take the other side, so catching the left foot and extending the right leg, we'll do the top leg first working through the outer lines of the right hip. The crescent moon shape of the foot. Let the shape of the foot help keep all those lines even. Just working through the mobility, rehydrating the area of the hip. Inhale, inhale, exhale. Switch, right foot behind the left, left leg lifting right arm extending. So again, spiral line. Feel free to slow down a little bit. Feel free to go at your own pace. These connections take time. Belly breath. Good. Again, let's switch and then just working through the spinal rolls a little bit. So Knees together, small dowel underneath the knees, wrap the legs around the dowel, interlace the hands behind the back of the head, again relax. Thinking of the spine moving fluidly and just the flexion of the spine brings the elbows and the knees towards one another. The extension of the spine brings you back down. So here we have a nice balance between the deep front line and the superficial back line, helping us in a very syncopated, very fluid way. It's not so much an ab exercise as it is an integrative spine roll. Full breath. So maybe the breath gets even a little longer here. It can take you through two or three movements over time. Inhale, inhale. Switch. We'll do the same thing with straighter legs. Again, remember to keep the knees towards one another, the heels expressing a little bit towards the ceiling, flexing the spine to come up, extending the spine to come down. And you notice hardening in the hips. When you notice more tension than relaxation, then that's your cue to slow down a little bit and to maybe pause. You're not just doing this to build muscle mass. This is foundational reorganization. You're actually having to retrain how you integrate through the spinal column. These can help a lot. I do these every day. Inhale, exhale. Placing the block back underneath the pelvis, we're going to feel the, a nice position for the pelvis on the block. Just a few breaths there just to relax. Notice how the body feels settled with support under the pelvis. And at your own time, you're going to draw the left knee towards you, catch the left knee with the left hand, and use that nice easy momentum to bring the right knee up. Legs extend towards the ceiling. Just do the dying bug here. So fingertips are going to find the floor behind the head, and you're just going to start to scissor the legs. Just kind of as if you were walking upside down, paying lots of attention to the quality and the connection between the legs. Don't let the legs just fly away. It's not about going to the full range of motion. 
introducing the same hand, moving with the same leg, so like you were walking like a camel. Pay attention to the negative space between the hand and the foot. Slow down as much as you need to. Inhale at your own time. Eventually you're going to switch, so maybe pause the arms for one revolution and let the legs now move with the opposite arm. So opposite arm and opposite foot moving together. Head can roll to the lifted hand. Relax. Nice. Okay, bend the knees, rub the hands together, creating heat and friction in the hands. Now you're going to keep the eyes open as you place the warmed palms over the centers of the eyes. From here, like you're on a Stairmaster, you're just going to extend the legs as if you were kind of climbing steps, like almost like a piston firing forward, just moving at a horizontal space, again anchoring down into the shoulders, into the back of the skull. Notice the relaxed quality of the eyes, breath through the nose always, and breathing into the back. Inhale, inhale. Inhale again, clearing the knees, clearing the hips here. Good, now keeping the hands where they are, lean the legs over to the left a little bit and you're just going to butterfly the knees out and then in. So just kind of opening and closing the knees with the legs leaning over to the left. You'll do the same thing on the other side when you're ready, just a few. Again, creating more fluidity in and around the hip crease, the femur bones creating space in the hips. Back to center, you'll release the hands, interlace the hands behind the back of the head, lift the head a little bit, and then right in the middle, continue with the butterflies, opening and closing the knees, breathing into the back. Feet can come apart a little bit, but you're not losing that connection, kind of the magnetic quality of the big toes coming towards one another. So let's pause here, find the fingertips tucking underneath the ribs a little bit, knees together, and then you're just going to extend the legs towards the ceiling and then bend the knees as you come down. So again, really massaging through the knees. The knees are together, the big toes are touching. This exercise in particular has really healed my knees. I had a partial meniscal tear in the left side that doesn't bother me anymore because I do these every day. Again, just fluid, fluid, paying attention to the quality of the breath and the ease of the movement. Again, slow down as much as you need to. Feet to the ground, you can remove the block from underneath the pelvis. And again, let's take the feet towards the air, the small dowel underneath the knees, the larger dowel in the hands, and just repeating that preparatory counter movement, sliding from left to right, the arms counterweighting you. A little elastic re-cup coil force as the knees draw in and then propel you to the other side. It should feel like the spine's really waking up after doing this a couple times. And pause, release. So now the legs and the arms are both going to float towards the ceiling and just going to starfish the arms and the legs laterally apart. So legs moving with the arms here, opening and closing. Really relax the hips and the heels, expressing themselves. Pay attention again to that negative space between the hands and the foot. Good, and then we'll alternate. So like you're making snow angels, as the legs open, the arms close, and as the arms open, the legs close. Breathing into the back. Inhale, inhale. Again, when you feel tension in the hips, bend the knees a little bit more. Really express the heels. Good, pause. Okay, and then our last spinal roll. So, knees together, and as the legs come up, we'll extend the legs towards the ceiling, bringing the elbows and the knees towards one another, and then bend the knees as you come down. So, just that simple crunch again, but seeing it more as a spinal roll, letting the flexion of the spine bring you up and the extension of the spine lower you. Tip of the tongue really leaning into the roof of the mouth where the teeth meet the gums. 
feel the full vertical line from toes to tongue, front and back. Inhale, inhale, exhale, relax. Okay, so you're going to make your way to the top of the mat and with the knees on the ground, you're just going to bend the right knee and you're going to stand on the right foot just kind of aligning the arch of the foot with the center of the left knee. Now keep the left foot really active on the mat as you tug a little bit there and then you're just maybe going to come back a few degrees. So opening up the front line of the leg, the deep front line here, you stay wherever you need to stay, right? So I'll just demonstrate the other side here. So left foot coming in line with the right knee, the arch of the left foot, and notice the right foot, the top of the foot is really working. It's not collapsed down. You should actually be able to put a tennis ball there or a small ball. Okay, and then you just stay to where you're at. Now, I'll show you the fuller variation as it eventually moves to being on the ground, but again, you just stay to where you're at. So. You're either going to do, just stay with the first one, or eventually you're going to come down and place the block underneath the skull. And now you can just have the feet on the ground here and roll the head from side to side on the block. Or eventually when you have the opening, you're going to take the left leg and same kind of action, drawing the left foot behind and catching the top of the left foot. Now this is quite a big opening, so if you don't feel comfortable here again you just stay with the first variation and then you do the head rolling without the leg tucked behind you if you do have the leg tucked behind you again keep the top of the left foot active and more and more you're working for an evenness through the front and the back and just letting the head roll from side to side here you might even feel the spinal column twisting all the way down to the sacrum, right? The spinal cord moving within that hollow column. So if you're working with the leg behind, you take the foot behind, catch the top of the foot. If you're just staying with the head rolling, no problem. But really important to open up the, the front line of the leg. So again, the first variation is fine, and then you could do the head rolling separately. Feel how the spinal cord kind of rotates all the way through the, the midline of the body. Back is heavy. Okay, and then releasing the leg. If you were doing the leg, and maybe just a few head rolls from side to side. Here the fingertips are on the earth, the hands are leaning into the small dowel center of the hands into the ends of the small dowel. Good. And then remove the block at your own time. Maybe you send the legs over top the head, rolling once or twice on the back body until you want to come all the way up. So really nice to feel how the connective work through the fascial body is starting to, starting to realign. Navasana, hugging in, boat pose, feel the sit bones heavy, first position here, knees are together, back is rounded, not losing that as you move to the second position, arms and legs can extend to any degree, doesn't have to be far, I think 60% effort, third position, maybe lowering a few degrees, point through the index fingers a little bit, feel that long vertical line, horizontal line, first position, hug in, relax, Breathe. Then second position when you're ready. Weight of the sit bones really helps you. Arms lengthen a little bit. Leg lines active. Knee is rolling in. The core of the body, no longer this mediated six pack image, but beginning at the tips of the toes, running to the top of the head, out to the tips of the fingers. The whole body connected. First position. Just doing one more on your own. Really paying attention to where you enter into too much tension. Keeping the body into this tensile space. Equal tension, equal relaxation. Second position. Third position.
position. Belly breath. And eventually the arms come over top the head, really feeling them rolling in. And coming up again, first position. Relax. Finally swiveling yourself around, preparing for the, the spinal rolls. So I'd like to use my hands kind of in the corners of my mat, the centers of my hands, right on the corners of the mat. Fingertips are wide, knees are together, big toes active, feet are tugging. And you exhale everything out, draw the bum back. And on your inhale, rounding the back, rolling the body through the arms, head coming up last. Exhale, take the bum back. Good, inhale, feel the head very heavy, using the tops of the feet, opening the front spine. Head comes up last, exhale, round back. So a few more on your own. Really let the brain of the body be in the tail, not so much in the head. The head is following the tail. Exhale, draw back. Connection in the feet, feeding the knees up to the hips, through the whole spine. Everything fluid, all the vertebra working together. Exhale. Inhale. Leaning, rolling, rounding. Exhale, now back. Inhale. Let's do six or seven here. These every day they really put my spine back together, keeping me healthy. And it's nice to feel healthy, <laughs> healthy in the body, healthy in the tissue. This is us again here, just radiant breath, allowing the breath to touch the tips of the body on the inhale. Again, just relax on the exhale, let the body fall. Five or ten breaths there. So moving into the experiencing portion of the practice, let's find Tadasana, just at the middle of your mat or at the top of your mat. Take yourself outside the body and view the body from this third person perspective and aligning the ear, the shoulder, the hip, the knee, and the ankle. And just kind of seeing yourself from that outer perspective, it's even alignment. Really let the weight sink into the body. Don't be afraid to bend the knees a little bit. Let the skeleton hang here. Let's take a few breaths. Ready, exhale everything out. Really notice the contact of the feet on the earth. And your next inhale is very gently going to bring the arms to about shoulder height and then forward. Exhale, release the arms down. So it's just the arms that are moving. So you sink down into the feet, the arms come up, and then a little bit forward. Inhale and exhale. Think of the arms really moving from the, the deep back, the center of the back, not so much from the shoulders. Inhale and exhale. Very simple. We don't have to make the practice any more complicated than this. Move to the top of the mat, feet together, heels apart a little bit, big toes might touch. Samastitihi, same position, just with the hands of the heart. Exhale, let the weight sink down into the feet, arms fall, sinking down, the arms come up, inhale else staying quiet and when you're ready exhale just the hips move back to fold yourself forward Uttanasana. hands to either side of the feet prepare
prepare, on your inhale, think of opening the front spine a little bit, looking part way up. And then exhale, you're going to bend the knees. Really feel the weight shift into the hands, either hopping or stepping the feet back. Feet together again, inhale, going to very slowly roll the body forward so the hands are underneath the shoulders. High plank, notice the heaviness of the head. Exhale, lower down low push-up and inhale catch the tops of the feet here really think of the broadness of the tops of the feet to open the front spine up upward facing dog inhale and exhale round and roll your way back to down dog nice to pass through the hands and the knees tuck the fingers once walk the hands back spread the fingers wide feel the weight shift back into the hands to eventually tuck the toes and let the weight down into the hands and the let the pelvis lift. Down dog here. Four to five radiant breaths. Let's bend the knees deep, lifting the heels. At the end of the exhale, lightly hop or step the feet forward. Inhale, lengthen and lift part way up. Front spine opens a little bit. Exhale, fold back down. Really let the head go. Again, as you think down into the feet, your next inhale brings you up. Think of extending the arms a little bit, lifting up, reaching up, eventually looking up. Exhale, hands back to the heart. Let's pause and notice the body again. Notice the, the feet touching the mat and just start to shift the knees forward, bending the knees a little bit, but not losing the front ribs, not letting the bum stick out too much. Utkatasan. Exhale, the hands down. Inhale, arms can lift up. And front and back body very quiet. Exhale, hips move straight back from here, folding forward. Surya Namaskara B. Preparing the fingertips next to the hands, inhale, uh, next to the feet. Inhale, lengthen and look part way up. And then exhale again. Weight moves into the hands to send the legs back. Feet together, rolling the body forward here. High push up. Inhale, hands come underneath the shoulders. Exhale, just bend the elbows to lower to two inches off the mat. Inhale, front spine opens, catching the feet. Let the head come through last. No pinching in the back body. Exhale, take your time rolling through the spine. So the Siri Namaskars, the sun salutations can feel kind of cranky first thing in the morning. It's just a nice way to, to roll and round your way through the body to let the spine start to integrate itself. Let's lean into the hands and the left foot and lift the right leg. Inhale and exhale, lifting the left heels to step the right foot forward. The back foot pivots to about 45 degrees. Now relax the belly on top of the right thigh. As so you do that, you let the head get heavy and on your next inhale, you think down into the feet to roll the spine up. Here, Vajrasana 1, Warrior 1 hands can move up a little bit. And think of that right knee right over top of the right ankle. Expand into the right knee a little. Inhale, expand to the tips of the body. When you're ready, your exhale is going to send you back down. Hands on either side of the right foot, right leg steps back. Again, feet together. Inhale, roll forward, high plank. Exhale, low push-up. Inhale. Transition to up dog. Exhale, round and roll. Lean your way to down dog. Fingers can tuck, walk the hands back. Shift the weight, tuck the toes. Notice the differences in the sides. When you're ready, the left leg is going to lift by weighting the right foot and the hands. Inhale, left leg lifts, 
and exhale again, stepping left foot forward. Back foot pivots to 45 degrees, feel the feet. Bring belly onto the thigh and just let the spine roll up on your inhale as you think down into the feet. Arms can eventually come up, bend into the left knee. There should be no extra tension in the shoulders and the neck. Let the weight and the feet be even, the tensile structure supported from the base of the body. The skeleton eventually just floating the skin. And exhale, hands to either side of the left foot, left leg back. Inhale, high push up. Exhale, low push up. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Yeah, take a few breaths in down dog, feel the evenness in the sides or unevenness, try not to be attached so much to the sensations of the body, just continually coming back to the breath, coming back to the evenness of the weight between the hands and the feet. Inhale, exhale, bend the knees deep, lightly hop or step the feet forward. Inhale, lengthen, look part way up, and exhale, fold back down. Again, here the knees start to bend and the shins move forward, and that eventually starts to erect the body a little bit, keeping the front ribs in, the bum not too sticking out, utkatasana, arms can lift, inhale, exhale, stand tall, samastiti. When you're ready, you can step the feet about hips width distance apart. And relax the body. Find the feet. Let the body just hang over top of the feet. Your inhale is going to lift the arms. Exhale, you're going to send the hips straight back. We're going to fold forward here, Uttanasana. Maybe you want to catch the peace fingers around the big toes. Your inhale lengthens the body a little bit. Your exhale folds the body. Don't be afraid to bend the knees here as much as you need to. And really just let the upper body ragdoll. Let the heaviness of the upper body be there. Feel the breath moving into the back, widening the back on the inhale. And exhale, just relax the upper body. Take three or four breaths here. When you're ready, your next inhale brings you up. Lift up, reach up. Look up a little, exhale, hands back, down. Keep flowing, inhale, arms lift and float. And exhale, hips move straight back to fold. You want to fold with the flat back as far as you can. When it's time, bend the knees, round the back a little bit here. You're moving on, Padahastasana, the palms of the hands, step underneath the palms of the feet. And explore the lines of the feet, the big toes, activated feeling that deep inner line through the back body. Each toe represents a, a different pathway through the deep front and superficial back lines. Belly breath, inhale and exhale, remove the hands. Next inhale brings you all the way up. Exhale. One more, we'll step the feet together, big toes touch, heels apart a little bit at your own time. Exhale. Inhale, arms lift and float up. And exhale, hips move straight back to fold forward. Here the wrists can cross behind the calves if you'd like. And maybe take opposite calf with opposite hand. Keep the space in the belly and in and around the hips. Don't just let the hips become super congested here. Let the head hang. Breathe normal. Always nice to invert the body a little bit. To let the composition of the body have a change in perspective. That's why we continue to turn the body upside down. Inhale, exhale, and when you're ready, the inhale brings you all the way up. Up, reach out, touch from the cup, exhale, hands to heart. Keep 
flowing, moving right into Vrikshasana, the tree pose. Let the right foot get heavy. Consciously think down into the right foot to let the left leg come up, placing the left foot to the inner edge of the right calf or the thigh. Lean the foot into the leg, the leg back into the foot. Arms can lift on the inhale when you're ready. Expand the breath to the space around you. Feel an evenness of the body. Left and right side, both down and up. Exhale, release the leg. Second variation, you're going to create a little tray for the left leg. And you're either going to place the foot in the number four position, or if you have the opening, maybe keeping the heel a little higher towards the right hip. Again, no tension in the knee. Here the left foot has to be very active, tugging on the right thigh. Inhale, and exhale. And release the leg. Rajanasan, wrapping the left leg around the right leg, bend into the right knee. Here the right arm comes to 90 degrees and the left elbow comes underneath the right. The gaze is through the hands. Breathe into the back. Inhale, exhale, release. And then let's switch. So as soon as the left foot comes down, you can notice a heaviness in the left foot. I'll just do this one facing the camera. So as the left foot gets heavy, uh, the right foot can be placed to the inner edge of the calf or the thigh. Inhale, exhale, hands can move down. Thinking down into the foot to let the arms come up, inhale variation with the hands. Again, as long as there's no extra tension in the neck and the shoulders, right, creating an evenness throughout the body. Right effort. Exhale, hands come back down. Second variation, again, whatever you did on the other side. So here you can see that my right heel is very active, and I'm only placing the foot up a little higher as long as there's no tension in the knee. And I'm even tugging with the right foot on the left thigh. It took me some time to get to, to this variation with the foot. The knees can be cranky over time. But I mean, over time they, they find their way. Exhale, let's release. Grajanasana now, right leg wrapping over top the left, bend into the left knee. Eventually the right foot catches the left calf. Left elbow to 90, right arm comes underneath. Feel the opening in the back. Inhale. And ready. Exhale and slowly release. And shake the legs up. So from the top of the mat, you find some asthiti and then leaning into the right foot. Let's reach the left leg back. Take your time. To open a little bit to the outer edge of the mat, keep the weight between the feet even. Arms can come to horizontal. Inhale, reach forward, and then reach down. Moving towards Trikonasan, triangle posture on the right side. So don't be in a hurry here. In fact, float the hand away from the foot a little bit, just to make sure that the feet are really supporting the posture. Eventually, if you have the opening, the hand can come down. Both, the, both sides of the body are nice and relaxed. Inhale, exhale. Let's bring the back of the left hand to the sacrum and then just adjust the feet moving towards Ardha Chandrasana. Right hand is coming down. Left leg is floating up. Again, from here, the arms can extend. But nice to have the hand on the sacrum there just for a moment to encourage lots of relaxation. Pay attention to the standing foot here. Inhale and exhale, eventually you're going to switch the hands. Left hand is going to come down and the right hand is going to come to the sacrum. Just relaxing the tail. Keep the, both heels beaming, eventually the right arm can come up as you are twisting now to the right. Parvrita Ardha Chandrasana revolved half moon. Inhale and exhale, let's bend the right knee, step the left leg back. The foot can land a little bit out to the side, but pivot it forward. You can come all the way up, square the hips to the top edge of the mat. And 
inhale and exhale, just start to send the right hip back to twist towards the right, staying heavy in the back heel, moving towards Parvrita Trikonasana, revolve triangle. Hands can open from here. Left hand to the earth, right hand up. And really think of the feet and the right hip, helping to just be guided back gently, twisting from the center of the spine. Exhale, the hand can come down, and inhale, lean into the feet to come up. Just float the arms forward a few times, relax the legs, let the weight sink. Inhale and exhale, you're going to take the hands to the back, either in Namaste 2 or just interlacing the fingers. Again, hips are square as you inhale, open the front body a little bit, exhale, again, think right hip back. Might be a little twist to the right to start to fold forward. Parsvatanasana. The front leg's about 80% straight, and eventually you think about the chin moving towards the shin. A few breaths there. Inhale and exhale when you're ready. We're going to begin to float the weight back onto the right foot left leg is moving towards the ceiling. Hands can stay on the back or they can wrap around the ankle or come right to the floor. Right as you lift the left leg, standing splits. Roll the left thigh and reach through the heel. Inhale, inhale, exhale. Left leg can come down and folding forward here. Feel the difference in the sides. Let the body relax. Let the head go. Inhale brings you up. Lift up, reach up, look up. Exhale, hands to heart. And do the same thing on the other side as you feel the left foot get heavy. Quietly step the right leg back, reach the right leg back. Finding the feet, open and square the hips a little bit towards the outer edge of the mat. Arms can come to horizontal. Inhale, reach forward a little, and then exhale down some. Take your time, really encouraging evenness in the feet. Whole posture supported by the earth, the head eventually turning without creating any tension in the neck or the shoulders. The gaze maybe coming towards the fingers on the right hand. Exhale, bring the right back of the right hand to the sacrum, shift the weight onto the left foot, right leg comes up. Ardha Chandrasana. You can always use a block here for support or the hand can float as you open to the right a little bit. Right arm can come up. Stay in the back heel. Inhale and exhale, twisting now to the left. Right hand coming down. Right leg reaching back, left arm eventually coming up. It doesn't matter how far you go, take a full breath, inhale and exhale. Step the right foot back, again, the foot at 45, maybe out to the side a little bit, feeling the feet, float the arms a few times. Oh, sorry, we're moving to Parvrita Trikonasana, so leaning to the left, twisting to the left as the arms might open, revolve triangle. Notice both weight and the feet are equal. Again, it doesn't matter if the hand touches the ground. In fact, in the first few years, it might not. Just go to a place where you can maintain that evenness. Now, leaning into the feet, coming up, and floating the arms a few times. Relax the legs, exhale, catch the hands in prayer or interlaced. Lengthen and lift the front body. Inhale, exhale, left hip moves straight back start to fold forward. Maybe a little gaze off to the left. Just to encourage that left hip back. Eventually the head folds. The whole body relaxes over top of the legs. Inhale, exhale. Floating now onto the left foot. Right leg reaching up. Finding a position for the hands, either at the ankles or on the earth. Lift the right leg. Beam through the right heel. Inhale, 
Exhale, fold forward. Uttanasana. Relax. Ready, the inhale brings you all the way up, lift up, reach up, exhale, hands to heart. Okay, good work today. We'll finish with Shavasana. Again, eventually the final posture is just simply laying down the body, laying down the breath, and laying down the mind. Just allowing everything to relax. It's been my experience that through doing nothing in this pose, natural alignment starts to return. So just enjoy this space here for a few minutes. Thanks for watching.